Hi folks, about 6.15, it is 26.3 degrees Celsius, 49% humidity. It is September 18th, Friday, 79.7. So you can see with the door open, it's cooling off a little bit out here. And my battery's back in the charge mode. It's not all peaked up. Um, you guys know if you have a Horde, um, or you have a Baja Warrior, or you have a Mojave Lakota, Honda 200S, 200SX, whatever. You know, at some point, you're going to need parts for it. And one of the tricks is getting those parts as reasonable as possible, especially if you're like me and you have multiple machines, or if you have one machine and you don't think money is something that should be wasted, so you don't want to get robbed when you're buying parts. The one nice thing about the Baja Warrior is it has a clone Honda engine on it. Having a clone Honda engine on it means everybody makes parts for that thing. The five and six point uh, five and six and a half horsepower Honda and Honda clones use a lot of the same engine parts and folks are happy to sell them to you and sometimes they're willing to sell you a bundle. Like I got the air filter right and put that there the spark plug so you gotta wonder sometimes these china spark plugs aren't the greatest thing in the world um, this is the gas filter that you know put you put up in the tank you can see the threads and down there is where the barb fitting is and came with the carburetor the carburetor has a nice rubber hose on it, the bag is sealed, and the clips, right, you can see the clips there. And it also came with all the gaskets, including one of the gaskets that I'm missing on one of the bikes, the one that goes on between the air filter and the um, carburetor, that, that square one. Sometimes they're metal, in this case it's plastic. And as a matter of fact, that carburetor I'm having trouble with, I'm thinking that I, I don't have um, the gaskets set up right, which might be what my troubles are. So, came with the gaskets and the carb, and this was like 25 bucks delivered. Uh, came from California, and I got the whole thing in, um, in just a few days. I mean, it came very quickly. So now I have another spare carb, and Homie likes having a spare carb for all my toys. And um, got the gaskets so I can get it set up right. Got the air filter so that I don't have to worry about sucking stuff into the engine. And uh, that's all good. What I also did, so this was like 25 bucks for that bundle. Carburetor, air cleaner, fuel filter, gas line, and spark plug not bad for 25 bucks out of china if you're willing to wait a little bit longer and typically the stuff coming from china takes two to three weeks maybe it could be even take as long as four so you got to kind of say you know i want this and i'm willing to wait for it but they have another kit that has everything i just showed you and the ignition coil and the coil that goes uh outside the flywheel that the spark plug wire sticks off of Anyway, it has all of that, and it's like uh, $27.99, so it's like another 3 bucks. Once again, shipped from China, so you got to wait for it, but you also get the coil. So um, I ordered that also, which gives me yet another spare carburetor, gives me a spare coil, uh, another spare air cleaner, and, y you know, kind of gets me a little bit ahead. Because, quite honestly, even tomorrow, if I find a good deal on a um, Baja Warrior, it will be coming home with me. My thoughts are with these Baja Warriors, um, it'd be nice to have less than 300 bucks into them. Because 300 bucks seems to be like what they're worth. They're not really worth any much more than that when they're used. I mean, if they're in really, really nice condition, maybe they're worth 350 maybe not really um 
if they need some love and attention, you know, you got to be careful. I paid two fifty for that one out of uh, out of Tractor Supply, and it's a whole load of work. And speaking out of the one out of Tractor Supply, I picked up uh, chains for it. This is uh, four twenty by ninety. It's supposed to be pro grade. It's supposed to be some good stuff. So I picked up a couple of chains. Turns out the chains I was soaking in the diesel fuel, they don't look like they're going to loosen up enough. Um, y you know, I can clean them and bang them and work them and do all kinds of stuff to them, but they, uh, quite honestly, they appeared to be crap chains, and once they get rusty, they're really crap chains, so... I, I don't think there's much going on with that me that might be your friend Trump now. I don't know, am I showing you the helicopter? It's hard to get a helicopter, they fly so fast. Anyway, you probably didn't see crap and you're nauseous from me shaking the camera. So, um there's the mini bike stuff. Uh, my wife's birthday is coming up and she likes Brighton jewelry, so I always get her the Brighton heart necklaces she likes these so I like them because they're right on eBay so they're about I pay typically about 35 bucks for them and what I do is um, so I get the necklace like this and then I get a fancy box and a card and give it to the wife for her birthday and she doesn't get that keeps her happy, and if she's happy, I get to keep buying crap to bring home to the hoard. And last but not least, I'm not going to bother taking these out of the bag. These are um, um, bibs um, for snowmobiling. I have a snowmobile suit, um, but with the zipper and all, quite honestly, it's a it's a tad hard to. Uh, to uh, fight my way into first the legs and everything else. So I figured I'd try a pair of um, bibs. I um, I got the military, I don't know, what do you call them, monkey boots, Mickey Mouse boots, right, to keep my feet warm. And then now I got a snowsuit and I got the bibs. Um, it seems that uh, folks in Alaska, I see... Um, on a lot of the TV shows and when I was up there talking to some of them they say they prefer the bibs because um, you could kind of get a little more ventilation you don't sweat as much in them and when you uh, when you go in and out and all about it's easier to um, take them on and off so uh, there was a good deal on bibs so I figured I'd pick them up uh, they're brand new obviously right, right in the bag um, I forgot the brand name but all this crap is made in China, so what's it matter what the brand name is? Um, anyway, they were uh, 50 bucks. Typically, they go for somewhere around 100 used. They typically go for around 50 so to pick up a new pair for 50 I was happy with that, and um, um, hopefully they'll work, they'll work out for me. Yeah, um, what I hope to do, there is... One more, I call it kind of a re after this one. This is the a big market. This is normally the markets where I bring try to bring home a truckload of toys, um, and we'll see how I fare tomorrow. There's one more I call it kind of a commercial market where people sell almost all new stuff, and I'll be going there. That's in October. Sometimes they have one in November. There's it's in October um, typically for what is that Columbus Day um, holiday. And a lot of times you have folks who sell sweatshirts, a lot of sweatshirts. And um, I'm hoping to go there and pick up um, a nice a nice sweatshirt or, or two, you know, a nice hoodie, thermal, almost like a jacket sweatshirt. So uh, that'll go with the ski pants and then hopefully I'll be able to keep myself nice and warm. All right, uh, folks, that's my two videos and that's all I have to tell you um, work just uh, just to amuse you guys um, you know everybody has a job and if you work in a factory 
factories are bought and sold and my factory was sold recently um, and now the new company is consolidating so they're offering buyouts and all that stuff I don't have any choice I'm what's I'm on what's considered a transition plan so I'm out of there um, January 1st end of December depending on when the pay periods fall we'll see what my last uh, day is so it doesn't matter to me but now I got all my buddies should I stay or should I go you know unfortunately here in the Hudson Valley um, it's a fairly expensive place to live but there aren't really all that many jobs unless you're willing to commute to New York City, which is about 90 miles away, or up to Albany, which is over 100 miles away. It's just that really, really, here in the Hudson Valley, there's just not a lot. We used to have uh, Ford in Mawa, New Jersey, about 45 minutes, an hour from here. We used to have a Ford plant that closed. We used to have Tuck Tape and Beacon that closed. We used to have Schatz Bearing and Poughkeepsie that closed. We used to have Green Fan that closed. Um, used to be IBM was a major employer in the Hudson Valley. They used to have uh, like 45,000 people. Now I think they have less than 12, maybe even less than forget less than 12 I think they have less than 5 um, Global Foundries is here now I don't know they got a couple of thousand maybe but yeah they're just they're just um, not the jobs that they used to be in the area but it's expensive to live so for a lot of my compatriots I feel bad for them because they're sweating right if you need a job right you got kids and family and like bills and high taxes and everything else right you got to pay all that stuff somehow and uh without a job it makes it makes it tough you know um i always find it interesting a lot of a lot of people say there's uh there's folks who um who don't want to work and i i guess there's a certain number of folks who don't want to work they just want to collect you know whatever aid they could get but from what I see, or I run across a lot of folks who, you know, want to work, my sons included, my uh, son's girlfriend, their friends, and it just seems that uh, though there are jobs around, and I mean, and, you know, a job is a job. If you got to take a job for minimum wage, you got to take a job for minimum wage. But here in like suburbia, so you get a job. At the Hannaford, well, from me to one of the local Hannafords is a couple of miles, so you can walk, and so you take the ten dollars an hour job and you walk each way. But if you're not, if you're much more than three miles from the local Hannaford, you kind of need a car. Well, it's tough to own a car, a uh, minimum wage or ten bucks an hour. Insurance is high. New York State has nasty inspections, which means your car can't be a piece of junk. You gotta, you, you know, you can't run a hoopty. Hoopty won't pass inspection. You got a check engine light. The car is grounded here in New York. You can't get a sticker for it. So, it, it's really a very expensive place to live. And you know, minimum wage job. I mean, if that's what you got to take, that's what you got to take. But how do you get to the minimum wage job? If it's much more than two, three miles, it's a long walk or bike. And once again, when you get there, you can't be sweating and stinking like a horse. You gotta, you gotta be ready. Especially, you know, you're working in the food business. They don't like stinky people in the food business. So, um, yeah, I'm not proposing any kind of solution. I guess, I guess in my mind, you know. Uh, this is not an easy economy for for anybody. So, um, see somebody with a sign, you know, we'll work for food. If you don't have a job, give them a couple of bucks. They probably need it. Anyway, folks, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up, and remember to get out there and enjoy all your days. Don't forget, stay the heck out the buckwheat, and you know, enjoy your time. Bye now.